Speed Bead Demos by Laura Simone Geometric Pattern Bead In the upper right corner of this sketchbook page, you can see the initial concept sketch for this bead, inspired by a beautifully cold-worked furnace glass piece that I saw online. I love the line and dot work intersections and the precise nature of the design, and I wanted to try and recreate it in a lampworked bead. My first attempt at this went terribly, but I ended up with a pretty neat bead in the end. I didn't record the failed attempt, but this is the end result. The issue was that I tried to do all of the line work first without having the dots to help establish where the line needed to curve around the body of the bead, and it went off the rails. I ended up just dragging the line pattern all around in swirls and adding dots on top. It's okay, but it's not what I wanted. So attempt number two, here we go. As prep, I pulled several very thin deep black stringers for line work and a thicker black stringer for dots. The thinner a stringer is, the harder it is to work with as it tends to want to snap or ball up or burn away before it attaches to the surface of the bead. I started on the bead with a clear core to waste less color while adding mass, building up the basic shape I wanted in the end. This isn't always the best idea, as sometimes there can be a little variance in the coefficient between clear and color that could cause incompatibility later on. But since this was an experimental bead, I felt like it was the right way to go. Unfortunately, in my clear application, I also trapped a fairly large bubble that had to be picked out with my tungsten tweezers so it didn't surface later on, which could ruin the fancy design I had in mind. The next step was to encase the entire clear base end-to-end -end with a new oracle color by Double Helix a lovely soft mint or pale olive. Once the color was layered on, I touched up any gaps with my knife to eliminate clear spots and started shaping the bead into a tapered barrel using my graphite marver. The oracle colors are non-reactive and they don't shift or strike like other double helix glass, so I knew I could count on a solid base color to show off my fancy line work. No distractions needed here. My very first lines are added around either end of the barrel shape. I like having a visible end to the pattern on a bead. Each is looped around and straightened with the knife edge. I'm feeding them onto the bead using the underside of the flame so they don't melt in as soon as they touch the surface and can still be shifted and straightened with the knife. At this point, I realize one end is slightly smaller and add a bit of extra base glass to extend it. Once the ends are shaped, I begin layering thin black lines along the length of the bead edge line to edge line. I start on opposite sides and then split the resulting halves twice to try and get the spacing right for six lines. I heat my planned path on the bead and lay the line across, still using the heat at the bottom of the flame to attach the stringer. Any wiggles are straightened with the knife blade in each line before they're melted in. It's also a good idea to pat the ends of the line down so they don't ball up and retract onto the line once you start heating. I carry on in this way until I have six perfect lines running down the body of the bead. The lines are then melted in so they won't interfere with the next steps. If you try to apply new stringer lines crossing over old still raised lines on the surface, the resulting gaps where they overlap will be the first places to disconnect when you go to heat them in. So it's important to melt the surface smooth before any overlapping intersections are applied. With my spacing lines in place, I apply large black dots along the lines, plotted in a zigzag pattern. Once they're all on the bead, I smoosh them flat with a graphite press to check the footprint and correct spacing. You can do this with the flat of your knife too, I just like my little graphite smooshers. Once they've been flattened a little bit, the black dots are melted in, and there's a bit of reshaping to get those edges back to nice and crisp. You'll see that a lot. Every step, you reset that shape. It helps you keep control of it, and as long as you're gentle, you can work on the same bead forever. Now comes the fun part. I apply long, thin black lines wrapping around the bead and intersecting all the dots along an angle, straightening with the knife and patting the ends, just like all the lines laid before. I used up so much stringer length on these wrapping lines that I nearly lost fingernails in the process. It was very exciting. There was no small bit of cursing. There was also a small length of the last line that went on entirely wrong. So I let it cool, snapped off that section with my tweezers, and reconnected it with a new bit of stringer. Once this spiral layer has been straightened and melted in, I repeat the exact same process going in the opposite direction. Wrap, pat, straighten, melt. 
Again, heating, wrap, pat, straighten, and melt. Thin line work on a bead can seem daunting, but just remember that your flame is cone-shaped and you don't have to use the center of that heat. If you can find the heat at the edges of your flame, you can develop the minute heat control it takes to put intricate line work on a bead. I carefully melt all of my lines in and give it a quick reshape. I'm also being careful not to pull the glass or distort my pattern as I'm reshaping each time. With all my lines melted in, I add a white backing dot to the center of each black dot. These are added so that the transparent layer added next will really pop. These are pressed in and just like previous dots, melted in so that they're flush with the surface in preparation for the next steps. I took some extra time shaping at this point since the next layer will be left 3D. And I wanna make sure that my edges are perfect and the shape is exactly where I want it to be before I move on with that last step. Once you've added 3D elements that you'd like to keep 3D, there's no going back to that marver. The final step is adding the transparent teal bubble dots onto each of the white backer dots. I applied these with a firm push to try and cover as much as I could but I still press them lightly to get perfect coverage and make sure that they were all nice and even. After I'd pressed them, I heat rounded them, but didn't melt them in, and I left them half raised like a little hemisphere so that each one has a raindrop effect. And here we have the final product annealed and lovely. It turned out really nicely. Thank you for watching.